This is my second time recording this super long video because my audio was not recording. Getting started in the world of 3D visual effects or really anything uh, that involves CGI can be pretty difficult as far as knowing where to learn uh, places that, you know, put out good information consistently and where to get assets, what plugins are worth it and all kinds of different things. So I thought that I would just start a series that I do every couple months where I just post what I'm learning uh, or where I'm learning, sorry, and uh, what asset databases I'm using, what plugins I'm using, all kinds of stuff like that. So that maybe every now and then I can show you something new or a new place to learn, new thing to use that'll help you out in one way or another. Um, so I don't really have a great structure for this video. Um, I have this super long list of links that I wrote down. So all of these will be in the description. Um, sh gonna shout out a bunch of really talented artists in this, uh, in this video, some plugins and asset databases and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with the resources list that I wrote down. Some of these are gonna be pretty mainstream. Some of these are gonna be paid. Some of these are gonna be free. Some of these are a little lesser known. So let's just uh, go ahead and get started with Quixel Megascans, obviously mainstream. Uh, it is seldom that you run into somebody now in the 3D space who doesn't know what Megascans is. Uh, really high quality assets, really high quality textures, decals, brushes, uh, anything you need basically if you are you know low on cash or don't want to spend very much getting started in 3d quixel mega scans is without a doubt the one-stop place for you to get high quality stuff and then you can probably scavenge the rest of the things that you need from free marketplaces around the web so quixel mega scans without question uh the number one place to get 3d assets for scene building however if Quixel doesn't have it, uh, this next one probably does, and that is CG Axis. So CG Axis has a lot more modern resources. So I use like their AirPods Max model in the Houdini 101 series. Uh, they have a lot of really high quality technology models, architectural visualization models, nature models. Like when I say high quality, I also mean high poly. So not the best for motion graphics. Um, however, really high quality stuff that I've used in multiple projects, both personal and for clients, thousands of PBR materials that are really well made, really well organized, really high quality. <laughs> um, and so, uh, just a lot more clean stuff, I guess, than Megascans typically is. So CG Axis, uh, I don't think their monthly subscription is expensive, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, another great place to get uh, assets. Next up on this list is the Pixel Lab. So Pixel Lab, uh, I know they have a couple different creators that work on things. The number one thing that I use them for personally is getting VDB uh, visual effects type stuff. So smoke, fog, uh, explosions, portals. They've got blood hits that they somehow have in VDB files, I think. Um, great place to get visual effects stuff they also have texture packs for all of the main render engines so redshift octane v-ray arnold redshift octane v-ray arnold i feel like there's another one but i might be forgetting um Pixel Lab also has a freebie section so if you sign up for their email list there are like whole scenes uh, small texture packs, models, some really useful stuff actually in their freebie section. So I recommend signing up for their email list because it's pretty useful anyways. They put out good stuff related to uh, CG and visual effects. Um, so yeah, Pixel Lab is one that I use primarily for visual effects stuff, but uh, go have a look around, see what you can find, and maybe you'll find something else useful for you. Uh, next one is no secret to Cinema 4D users, Grayscale Gorilla. They have a lot of, uh, this one could also go under the training section because they put out outstanding updated training as well. 
they have a lot of individual plugins and packs of assets and different things like that that you can use. Um, the plus subscription is fairly expensive. I believe it's like $400 a year or something like that. However, the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library is so deeply embedded in my workflow that I cannot possibly recommend it enough. And if you're new to Cinema 4D and you want to learn, the Grayscale Gorilla Plus training is going to fast track you without question. So if you can afford it, uh, the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library is outstanding. But if you can't, uh, they obviously have individual plugins like uh, Gorilla Cam that I use all the time, HDRI Link Plus that I use every single day. Um, so very useful. Thank you, Grayscale Gorilla, for all the things that you do for the Cinema 4D community. Uh, this next one is not actually a like an individual place um, but Gumroad is an outstanding resource for finding different uh, things for 3D in general so you can find things for Cinema 4D, Blender, Houdini, 3ds Max, Maya, all the different things you can see if I'm scrolling through my library on screen now that I have stuff for Cinema 4D, Blender, and Houdini um, really high quality stuff you can find uh, useful like small developer team third-party plugins um, a lot of the things that i've purchased on gumroad have found their way into my daily workflow so uh, gumroad is just a good place to go and look around and see what you can find uh, they have a marketplace where you can just search I just search Cinema 4D every now and then, and I just go through and look and figure out what's new. So Gumroad, great resource for finding new things to use. These last two that I have in the resource list are free. So Polyhaven is obviously a very well-known place for HDRIs, textures, and models. Um, all three of those are pretty much the only things that you need to really get started in scene building with 3D. So. Uh, Polyhaven is a great resource if you're brand new and you just want to try building a scene, go download some stuff from there. And uh, Polyhaven has some, some really, really high quality stuff. I think some of their stuff goes up to 8K, but if not, it's at least 4K. So very useful nonetheless. And then the last link that I have on this list is to the My Mini Factory Scan the World database. So if you're unfamiliar with Scan the World, basically, uh, people scan things in the world and they upload them to this database. So a lot of like museum assets are really popular in there, like busts from, you know, museums all across the world. Uh, if you go into the recents, you can usually find some pretty funny stuff. But uh, if you go into the popular section, there are some really famous assets that have been scanned in and that you can use in some general scene building, all open source. So very cool stuff uh, shout out to scan the world that's it for the resources i believe so that's pretty much everything that i use as of right now for resources uh, i will quickly just say the plugins that i use on a daily basis are the redshift pbr material builder from gumroad the forester plugins for cinema 4d insidium fused and the grayscale gorilla stuff those are the only things that I use on a daily basis in Cinema 4D. Uh, so links to everything that I just mentioned in the description. Now I'm gonna go into some of the learning resources that I have. First, I'm gonna do Cinema 4D, uh, which is a kind of a shorter list. And then I will talk about where I'm learning Houdini stuff after that. And that is some fun information. So Cinema 4D learning resources, uh, we're going to go pretty quick through the learning resources because uh, there is less to say about all of them. Uh, starting off with like places that put out content and like courses and stuff. And then I will go down to YouTube channels that I watch. Uh, Cineversity and Grayscale Gorilla, obviously one and two for learning anything fundamental to Cinema 4D. If you're brand new, go to Cineversity.com right now and you can learn about pretty much anything you wanna learn in Cinema 4D. I recently learned from Cineversity about the uh, both team render system and the take system, both of which have found their way into my workflow every single day, and I will have videos coming on them soon. Uh, Grayscale Gorilla, obviously, 
already talked about them some great fundamental uh, cinema 4d training tools outstanding overall uh, the only course that I have ever taken and I will swear by it uh, for anything 3d related is the LFO design redshift course for rendering and games and VFX I believe is what it's called now uh, link will be in the description uh, the price has gone up a good bit since I took it but that is without question the most comprehensive best explained most useful like applicable uh, course on redshift that I have ever seen and I can't really recommend it enough there's a Facebook group with great support uh, so yeah that's where I learned redshift and to this day I revisit lessons in that course and yeah just great information overall uh moving into uh youtube channels that i watch uh i don't watch as much youtube related to cinema 4d anymore because i know the program well enough to do my own r d and so that's usually what i'm doing is just kind of going in and fiddling around and eventually i come out with something that i can use but the few channels that I do still watch are Ross Mason Designs, who does a lot of good Cinema 4D and Redshift uh, breakdowns and stuff. Uh, I watch I Go By Zach, who I feel like a lot of people probably know by now. His channel is still smaller, but he has some great stuff about Redshift realism. Uh, so I do check in on his channel every now and then. And then Lucas Thorup, or Thorup, um, however this is pronounced does some really good dynamics work in cinema 4d and so i do check in on his channel a good bit uh some kind of smaller channels but i feel like they've gotten some good pu publicity recently so um those are just the channels that i check in on now for cinema 4d um in general patreon is also it's kind of like the gum road of learning um uh i subscribe to a couple different patreons i think 3d bonfire is a really good one um and then vincent schwank is another great learning resource for cinema 4d and if there are any others they'll obviously be linked in the description but lots of good places to learn so i uh, just wanted to give a shout out to some of those now my houdini learning resources are all on YouTube and are pretty in depth. So let's go ahead and dive into those really quick. Uh, the first channel on the list here is Nick Medica. He has kind of, his channel has grown a lot recently and he does some really, really good tutorials. So it's all definitely deserved. He has a really good uh, base of tutorials on his channel. Tim J Design, similar story. Uh, great tutorials about procedural design um, so he has some free ones on his channel and he also sells courses on his website uh, so highly recommend checking out Tim J designs obviously Intagma is on the list if you're talking about Houdini probably the biggest Houdini channel that I know of personally they do a lot of really good beginner friendly well-produced easy to follow content uh, CG Artist Academy is one that doesn't really upload anymore, but has some really good back catalog stuff of learning different dynamics things in Houdini. So uh, I figured I would put them on the list. And then let's see, Regular Menthol <laughs> is um, another one that I have found myself watching pretty frequently. Again, uh, it's, a lot of the Houdini channels don't upload that often. Um, Nick Medica, Tim J, and Intagma are probably the best three for consistent learning. Uh, but some of these others have like some really good back catalogs of stuff. So I just wanted to give them little shout outs. My favorite channel at the moment is Simple and Procedural. And so if you are really looking to dive deep into Houdini and really try to understand it, this guy is the freaking best and he also has a podcast where he just talks kind of all things cg and visual effects and whatever his guests do so really great uh channel simple and procedural uh hagi haggy or hagi is a channel that doesn't do voiceovers so you're kind of just following somebody 
doing something, which is kind of hard sometimes, but they have some really good tutorials as well. So I uh, figured I would throw them in on this list. Doxia Studio is another one who has some really good tutorials on like particle systems and pyro stuff. And then the last one on this list that I have is Simon Houdini. And this is, uh, this is a channel I definitely used his pyro video and some of his different dynamic stuff as well. So that was a lot. Um, all really fast. I probably didn't get a chance to really do many of those creators justice, but all of them are linked in the description and make incredible things. So definitely go ahead and check all of them out. I hope this video helped you in some way. If it did, leave a like, subscribe, and turn the notification bell on. Like I said, I want to do this video every couple months just to kind of update what my learning resources are and where I'm getting assets from and stuff like that, just to kind of keep everybody in the loop on what I got going on. So I hope this helped you and I will see you in the next one.